Have you ever found a really awesome truth in the Bible, you know, by reading it? But when you try to share it with another believer, they hit you with one of these? Sure, the Bible says that, but what it really means is... I first started running into this as a kid after I began to seriously study the Word of God, and it was like a broken record. You're in error, dear brother. When that passage says X, it's obviously referring to Y. But how am I supposed to know that's what it's referring to? Uh, well, it's easy. The context. I read the context. How do I know you're not just making that up? Hmm, it's, it's obvious. I really had no idea how to respond. And of course, depending on who I talked to, the explanations would always be different. What do you do with authoritative claims about Bible passages when you can't read them for yourself? Literally, anybody could say anything. How do you know whether it's true? I'm going to tell you about something, and it might make you mad at me. Because once you see this, you can't really unsee it. Your theology discussions and endeavors will forever be haunted by it. In science, there's this concept known as falsifiability, and it's crucial to the process of figuring out what's true and what isn't. It's the ability to test a statement, and now pay attention because this is key. Observe whether or not it's correct. For example, if I told you an alien spaceship crashed in Roswell, New Mexico, well, what do you do with such a claim? Nothing, really. Unless you can observe it yourself, wow. you can't actually say whether or not it's true. Essentially, all you have are best guesses and speculation. So this statement would be referred to as not falsifiable. On the other hand, if I said the sun will come up tomorrow, well, there's certainly a way to test that, right? You can actually watch the sun Whoa. come up. You could flip it and say the sun won't come up tomorrow. Either way, it's a falsifiable statement because it can be shown as either being true or false to all parties involved. So to clarify, something being falsifiable does not mean it's true or not true. It means that through observation, there is a way to tell whether it is. This concept has been identified in science, but not really in Christendom. So what you often have going on is Christians making all kinds of claims and there being no verifiable way to test them. For example, if someone says John 14, 12 is not referring to any miracles of healing, it's only referring to the spreading of the gospel. Well, there is no passage that says that, nor does the definition of the word works mention such a limitation. So all possible avenues of verification coming up empty, what do you have left? A guess, speculation, conjecture, whatever you want to call Call it, but it simply can't be read in the text. On the other hand, if someone said Jesus worked miracle healings and then later he said that those who believe in him would do the same works he did, well, Jesus working miracles can be found here, here, and here, and his statement about us doing his works can be found here. By changing the claim, we were able to test its accuracy through observation, thus making it falsifiable and, in this case, true. Now, a lot of Christians, even after being shown this, will insist on making statements that aren't falsifiable because they believe certain concepts are obvious or so reasonable that they have to be true. And that will work as long as you're around people who are willing to make the same assumptions you are, which is pretty rare. Most of the time, believers disagree on a number of different things. And in these scenarios, such an approach provides no tiebreaker, no ultimate authority to show who's correct and who's in error. You're kind of just left endlessly arguing for whatever you think is right in your own eyes. Sound familiar?